one of the colossal supercarriers developed by the U.S. Navy after World War II. USS Forrestal was an enormous capital ship, built to show the world the extent of U.S. naval supremacy and guarantee its allies a new age of peace and prosperity. The almost four football field long vessel immediately became a critical part of U.S. foreign policy, carrying shakedown operations in Guantanamo Bay before the Cuban Missile Crisis, supporting a military coup d'etat against Brazilian President João Goulart, conducting several NATO exercises, taking part in the Suez Crisis, and breaking numerous world records. But despite its extraordinary achievements, the carrier would be cursed with a series of catastrophic accidents and unrestrained fires that would haunt her crew for almost four decades. A new ship for a new age. To assume its new central role on the world stage after World War II ended, the United States invested heavily in its naval capabilities so it could be better prepared for future threats. Furthermore, it had recently signed the North Atlantic Treaty and was now responsible for providing military support for NATO to deter a Soviet invasion of Europe. The war had put the first nail in the coffin of the old naval doctrine focused on battleships and ship-to-ship -ship combat. Instead, the new carrier-focused principle demanded the creation of larger, more powerful aircraft carriers, able to launch entire swarms of warplanes in a moment's notice. A new class of colossal U.S. carriers of unprecedented size and tonnage then emerged. The Forrestal-class supercarrier was the first in a series of ships built under this new philosophy. With their unparalleled 75,000-ton weight, a size 25% larger than Midway-class ships, full integration of the angled deck, a huge island, and most importantly, their extreme air wing, capable of carrying up to a hundred individual aircraft. The new Forrestal-class ships proved to be a military and naval breakthrough. USS Forrestal was completed in 1955, followed by USS Saratoga, USS Ranger, and USS Independence. At that moment, she would become the largest carrier in the world, surpassing the Japanese Shinano. More importantly, she became the first carrier specifically designed to support jet aircraft, and the first one built with an angled flight deck, steam catapult, and an optical landing system. With its daunting size, state-of-the-art technology, and the ability to deploy an unprecedented number of warplanes from its deck, USS Forrestal quickly became the pride and joy of the U.S. Navy, and the beacon of a new age of American naval supremacy. A long career. USS Forrestal deployed from Naval Station Norfolk in Virginia and spent her first year of service in training operations off the Virginia Capes and in the Caribbean. One of many critical tasks she conducted during those initial months was training. As the first ship of her kind, Navy crews had to undergo extensive training to learn how to use the new systems. On January 15, 1957, the supercarrier departed to join the Sixth Fleet in the Mediterranean, where she would spend most of her service years. With no significant conflicts in the region, Forrestal conducted several diplomatic tours in which she would visit local ports and take dignitaries and the general public on board. Forrestal made history in November of 1963 when Lieutenant James H. Flatley III and his crew made 21 full-stop landings and takeoffs in a C-130 Hercules aboard the carrier, setting a record for the most significant and heaviest aircraft landing on a Navy aircraft carrier. The feat was an attempt to determine whether the massive Hercules could serve as a Super COD, or Carrier Onboard Delivery Aircraft, to replenish supercarriers on duty. Despite the success, the landings were later deemed too risky for conventional crews, and the idea was scrapped. Forrestal continued to serve in the Mediterranean region for several years, allowing the U.S. to respond to significant events immediately. One such occasion was when Forrestal rushed to Tunisia in 1973 to support the rescue operations in the flooded Medjerda River Valley near Tunis. A year later, amid the sudden Turkish invasion of Cyprus, USS Forrestal was crucial in helping evacuate U.S. citizens from Cyprus. In a significant Joint Navy-Marine Corps operation, Forrestal provided air support as the Sixth Fleet evacuated 466 people in only five hours. 
but supporting U.S. troops was not the 20-year-old ship's only duty. Forrestal was chosen to participate in a particular shock test that entailed planting high-yield explosives near the hull of the massive ship to determine if a capital ship could withstand the strain of close-quarters combat and still remain operational. The test showed that the supercarrier was not only massive in size, but also incredibly sturdy. A series of catastrophes. It is said that the crews aboard USS Forrestal had a generally relaxed and can-do attitude that often overshadowed the safety regulations. Such laxness strongly contributed to the many incidents that occurred on deck throughout the years. In October of 1968, a routine night launch turned into a significant incident. As the last VAW-123E2A took off, it violently skewed and went off the angled deck and into the water nose first. The aircraft then flipped over onto its back, breaking its radar dome and quickly submerging as it began to sink. A helicopter-led rescue operation was immediately deployed. Two crew members were rescued, while the other two officers were deemed lost at sea. Then, on July 10, 1972, while moored at Pier 12 in Norfolk, Forrestal suddenly burst into flames when an operations room below deck ignited due to human error. The fire destroyed $7 million worth of computer equipment and caused the flight deck to glow red from the heat of the fire, suddenly leaving a hole on the surface. The sailors were able to pump water inside the hole to quench the flames, but the ship was severely damaged after the ordeal and underwent three months of repairs. The replacement parts needed were taken from USS Nimitz, which was under construction at the time. Another tragedy struck Forrestal on January 15, 1978, as an A-7 Corsair II from VA-81 crashed onto her flight deck and two men lost their lives. The pilot was operating without communication gear due to an onboard malfunction, and as he was making his approach, he saw the light signaling that it was permissible to land. However, he soon realized that the deck was covered with parked and moving aircraft. With no way to pull up, the pilot ejected and survived with minor injuries. Still, his plane crashed into another aircraft. Forrestal suffered at least three other fires during her career, all of which were quickly extinguished with no losses. Still, a disaster in July of 1967 would haunt the sailors aboard the supercarrier for the rest of their lives. An uncontrollable fire. On July 29, 1967, Forrestal was located off the coast of Vietnam, engaged in combat operations in the Gulf of Tonkin. Several camera crews were stationed on deck, recording aircraft launchings and landings as part of a training program. The footage shows the sailors immersed in their routines, with most of them not wearing any safety equipment. Instead of using the special munition elevators to load warheads into aircraft, the sailors lifted the projectiles on their own, disregarding safety procedures. Suddenly, an electrical anomaly caused a Zuni rocket on an F-4B Phantom to fire, striking the external fuel tank of an A-4 Skyhawk in front of it. A gust of fire and debris immediately spread through the aircraft. The sailors quickly rushed to help the pilots who were still on board their aircraft, but blinded by bravery, they failed to realize the flammable jet fuel was already spread across the deck and cooking off the fuel tanks of other planes. A massive chain reaction ensued, with a series of lethal explosions taking place as fuel tanks and munitions detonated one after the other. Several attempts to fight the fire were made, but time and time again, they ended in tragedy as the crewmen were poorly trained in firefighting protocols and used water blasts to quench the flames. However, the burning fuel only spread further worsening the situation. Eventually, the firefighters had to completely retreat as the fire became uncontrollable and the fuel began to leak below deck. As other American ships approached to support the Forrestal crew, specific instructions and equipment to fight the flames also arrived. Slowly but effectively, the sailors began to regain control of the perilous situation, and it took them 14 hours to put the fire out. Aftermath In total, 134 sailors lost their lives, and another 161 were injured. The ship stayed afloat, but the damage exceeded $72 million, not including the damage to aircraft. 
pilot and future U.S. Senator John McCain, and future U.S. Pacific Fleet Commander Ronald J. Zlatoper barely survived the ordeal, as McCain was next in line to the aircraft that misfired the projectile that caused the catastrophe. The disaster persuaded the Navy to modify its firefighting practices. It also revised the weapon handling procedures and installed a deck washdown system on all carriers. To improve firefighting training, the new Farrier Firefighting School Learning Site in Norfolk was named after Chief Gerald W. Farrier, the commander of Damage Control Team 8, who was among the first to lose their lives during the initial explosions. But despite all the changes, Forrestal would go on to suffer several more fires before she was finally decommissioned in 1993. Thank you for watching my video. Do you think the numerous fires could have been prevented? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And for more history-inspired content, make sure to subscribe to Dark Seas and our other Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned.